Hello everyone. I'm going to talk a little bit more about getting around in Mandelbulb. And I want to go ahead and mention that we're going to stay with this 480 by 360 size, which is good for learning. But when you get ready to start really making these videos, you're going to want to move up to 720p and watch videos 3 and 4 uh, in order to get some decent actual videos to upload. Uh, but for these purposes, we're going to go ahead and calculate our 3D with our standard Mandelbulb and take a look at how to navigate around here. If we click on our 3D Navigator, uh, what you can see here is a lower resolution version with some controls. Right down here, uh, you've got some keyboard shortcuts or you can actually use, um, you can click on these in order to do some zooming in and out and sliding around. You can use this. This is actually going into and increasing the zoom, which you'll see right here. There are limits to how far you can go, but the idea here with uh, this kind of fractal is that there is a lot of detail. No matter how far you zoom in, it doesn't pixelate. Uh, it will re-render, and you'll see some amazing stuff in here sometimes. Um, you can also change where you're looking. So we're going to stay in one spot here and look in a different direction. And you can find some pretty interesting views. Again, if you look on the keyboard, you can hold it down. You can also click on the screen itself and you can move your mouse around in order to get to a, a dramatically different point without clicking a whole bunch of times. So what we're going to take a look at now is turning this into a high quality view, but it is slower. So unless you really need to see more detail, it's a lot better to just go with the high speed version here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my keyboard here and kind of fly around. You can easily use your mouse click on the screen to reposition. And what you'll notice is that things start to disappear. Uh, it is not always very predictable as to what's going to happen next. So this is how you get around with the 3D Navigator. Uh, but the idea here is that we are going to make a video, some kind of animation out of this. And the way that that works is that you're going to send keyframes from this 3D view to this screen right here. This is the animation maker. And what we've do just done is created our first keyframe uh, for the beginning of our video. So it's actually going to start right here and then we would navigate to a new location. For example, I could zoom out and then send another keyframe and our 3D Navigator now has switched over to the Animation Maker where we've got two keyframes and it's going to do 50 frames in between these two. So if you want to see what that animation is going to be like, there's a handy dandy preview mode right over here. And it'll take from any frame that you st tell it to start on and go to any frame you want it to end on. And it can be downscaled. You'll notice that if I say downscale this, the amount of time needed goes down. If I say I don't want any downscaling, actually show it to me at the original resolution. This would take 46 seconds to preview. If I get that started, you're going to see the animation preview start and it will do the calculations for 50 frames in between the two keyframes that we've specified. So that's going to take a little while to do. If you exit prematurely, it will show you what it's got so far. And I'm going to go ahead and do some downscaling so that this only takes four seconds to render out the 50 frames for a preview of what our video would look like. So this is really handy for checking to make sure that it's doing what you expected it to do. I'm going to go ahead and exit and add a few more keyframes by going back over here. So we just did a little backing up. Now we're going to, uh, let's say, look at a different part and zoom back in a little bit. We send another keyframe. 
Now we have three keyframes and you want to be very careful with this scrolling back because it's easy to forget to go back to the end so that the keyframes continue and you'll wipe out the keyframe that this is on at the time. So make sure that you go back to here when you get ready to continue. I'm going to go ahead and do a render preview and you'll see how we came out. And then it's trying to get over to the new place and zoom in at the same time. can see that a little more smoothly. Okay, now you can save this as a GIF and you want to make sure you're not saving stuff into the mandible. Make sure you've got a spot over here with a folder made up where you're saving your experiments. If not, then this is the time to go ahead and create that folder. And you're going to give it a name, uh, third experiment. And again, I really recommend when you start doing these, you're going to end up with all different versions. Put that date in front of there so you can keep track of your different ones. And it'll save a nice little version there. If we actually want to go and look at it, it's something that would be in that folder we just created. And if you double click on it, it'll open in a browser because that's uh, the best way to view these sorts of animations. So this is something that can be uploaded to the web, used as an avatar, um, but it is a very low resolution kind of way of seeing your video. Uh, three and four will show you how to really turn it into a good one. So I'm going to go ahead and close Mandelbulb up and show you a good way of uh, just getting a good little video out of it. So I'm going to go back to my Mandelbulb folder and run it again. I'm sure there's some way to reset it, but sometimes this is the quickest. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate this in 3D, bring up my lighting tab and just change it to one of the others. Maybe this really brightly colored one. And of course you can also play with the formulas and maybe change this a little bit just to give it a slightly different look. I'm going to calculate that 3D again. Uh, you should really play with these different formulas over here to get the kind of look you want. But I'll stick with the standard Mandelbulb right now. I'm going to bring up my 3D Navigator and send my first keyframe. Now I'm going to use my keyboard D key to move over to the left and then turn my camera so it looks to the left. Now when you do that, you do end up with some turning. So I'm going to use this rolling right here to try and keep it upright so it looks like it's just rotating in space. So I'm going to send that keyframe and then do it again. I'm going to move over to the right, look to the left, and maybe zoom back in a little bit. It tends to move around as you're doing this, but let's take a look at what that did. So I'm going to send my third keyframe I've got again one, two, three. Be very careful as you do this that you go back. And let's render a preview with only two downscaling so it happens fairly quickly. And it'll start to look like this is turning in space. Okay, so I've changed my colors. I've changed my. Um, formula just a little bit. So this is now a unique uh, animation here. So there are a couple of ways of saving what you've done and that's really what this lesson is about because once you start doing this you want to make sure that you're keeping the stuff that you're making so you can keep going on it, you can reproduce it. So there's a couple different ways. You can uh, save just the parameters. That would just be the formulas. So if you come up with a good shape but you haven't animated anything yet then you could save just the parameters and you can see that it goes to the M3 parameter folder here where some have already been made that you can check out. But again, I really want you to be saving in your own spot. So 141010, we'll call this fourth experiment and that would be just the formula. Now if I want to save the animation keyframes that I've done. It'll be a small file, won't be a great big video, but I would be able to render it 
uh, whenever I wanted to. This is save the animation parameters. And so you're, we're going to go ahead and do that as well. So I'm going to go to D drive and take a look at that same folder, third experiment, 14, 10, 14, fourth experiment. So if I go and I look in that folder on the D drive, you're going to see that there's the animation that we made, very small, and then you've got an M3P and the M3A. So I'm going to go ahead and close my Mandel bulb just so that we can try and open this up. Oh no, it doesn't open. Of course not. It is not installed in Windows. You cannot just open the files that way. I get this question a lot. So you must run Mandelbulb. I recommend that you unzip your own copy over there so that yours doesn't get mixed up with anybody else's. And we can open the parameters from our folder. And it only shows the M3P. And then we can calculate it and you can see it's the different color with the slightly different formula. But there are no animation keyframes. Once you start making keyframes, you're going to want to open from this, from this window, open, go to the, your folder, and you'll see that the M3A, when it opens up, it has all your keyframes. So the idea here is that you find a good formula, make your color combinations, create this long string of keyframes that's going to take a long time to render in high definition, and then you leave the computer running overnight. If it's a super long one, you're going to do it over the weekend. Uh, we can have several computers working on the same animation by splitting up the first few hundred on one machine, open the same animation parameters on another machine, and you can have multiple computers working on your mini movie. So let's go ahead and open up our 3D Navigator and insert the parameters. Let's see, how does this work? If we've got this right here, we can insert this view to the main program and calculate it. And we can go to our 3D Navigator and insert the parameters from the main and now we're back at that last position. So I can continue keyframing my animation through those two steps. You might want to watch that again. Let's go ahead and go up this time and look down, send a keyframe, go further up, look down and this time we're going to zoom down into the heart of the mandible. Send that keyframe. Zoom in some more. And you'll see we start to get some weird color stuff. Again, this is not the view that it's actually going to look like at the end. So I'm going to send one more animation keyframe and send my view to the main program for 3D rendering. And I'm going to say, calculate that 3D for me. Add all your shadows. And you can see that this particular formula with this color combination, it starts to look a little fuzzy. Not all of them do that, but this one does. If I want to see what that animation looks like, I can downscale quite a bit and do a render preview. And I won't be able to see the detail, but I'll be able to see me flying down into the heart of the mandel bulb there pretty quickly. So I like that. I like the pacing of it. I like the speed. And I think what I'm going to do is back up just a little bit for this keyframe and see what that looks like. So I'm going to go back to my 3D Navigator and this time I'm going to zoom out just a little and send another keyframe. So if I want to see what that looks like, I can bring up my animation. I can say, okay, I just want to render from 4 to 6. So I'm going to say 4. I don't want to do any downscaling. Well, maybe a little. And let's render a larger preview of that last little bit of the flight where I go into the heart of the mandelbulb and then bounce back. I have less distance that I'm coming out. So it should go in fast and then come out slow.
So that looks pretty nifty. I'm going to go ahead and exit, make sure I'm on the very last one here, and see if I can back out of this with the 3D Navigator. So I'm going to zoom out and uh, try and keep going around this way a little bit. I'm going to try and keep it straight up and down and send an animation keyframe. And now I, I would just like this to loop back to the beginning. So I'm going to go back over here and say, please loop the animation. So it's going to take 50 frames and try and get back to the very first frame. And we're going to see if it flies through it or if it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to render my six on out. I'm going to do a very uh, quick render and just see what happens here. So it does. It does a really good job of getting back to the first one. So it will loop over and over. So I can go back and say, okay, render the whole thing and show me what the whole animation looks like. So I'm starting from the first keyframe, so I get to see all of the zooming in. And then it's going to come out. And it's going to try and get very quickly. You know, I only gave it 50 frames to get back to the beginning. But now it's going to loop endlessly. The first frame and the last frame are exactly the same. So let's save that GIF right there. Go over here to Digital Graphics, third experiment. And yes, I do have another one that I'm going to make. A lot of times I'll just put letters there. So I may end up with a B and a C and a D. Although in this case, this is really our fourth experiment. So I've got a little animation that it's going to save, very small one. If I want to get a bigger one, then I would have to exit. Say don't downscale and spend 4 minutes and 40 seconds. But I definitely want to save the animation parameters into that folder that I made right here. So I might say, well, that's my B version. I've added some more keyframes. So it's, I can tell which one was the most recent. And that is saving keyframes and Parameters can be saved individually, but I really didn't do that much to the actual mandelbulb. It's more the animation keyframes that are really important. Now, one last thing, you can go back and you can say, I want you to make this a lot slower. And you can say, give it more time, more frames, four seconds to go in between each one would be quite a bit of time. We normally render this at 30 frames per second. So uh, we can do this, and you're going to see quite a very different kind of animation when we're done. Another thing I'll do is if it has a lot of distance between this last one and what the first one was, I may do quite a bit uh, extra, like give it five seconds to get back where it needs to. And so if you do one and it's really quick, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to make this a high-res real render, Going back and just giving it more time in between to get a longer video, this at 30 frames per second is going to be maybe 12 to 15 seconds long. Um, but before you start outputting, make sure you watch steps 3 and 4 because you need to change these. Uh, you definitely want to change the folder where those are going to go and have it able to import those into Premiere.